I'm going to fulfill another request today. This one is for Palm Bouillonnaire, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's potatoes au gratin or gratin. My mom used to make potatoes au gratin. This is what she made, Betty Crocker, and we liked it. It was good. It is good. But I got to tell you, it threw me off for many, many years, decades, in fact, until today, because I assumed, because this has a cheese sauce in it, that au gratin meant something with cheese. Now, I took French in college. I know the French word for cheese is fromage, but I thought this had something to do with cheese. Okay, so I went on the internet, I did a lot of research, I'm looking at different recipes, and I'm like, where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? Where's the cheese? If it was mentioned at all, it was mentioned only as a, an option. So finally, I turned to my Larousse Gastronomique. This is my culinary encyclopedia. It doesn't have every term in it, but if it's a French term, it'll be in here. Gratin simply means browned on top. Talk about deflated. I thought it was something you know, gourmet. I mean, macaroni and cheese, if it's made in the oven, is browned on top. And in here, there is a recipe for macaroni gratin. I'm going to do a video of that because it's a different kind of, it's an odd recipe. There's also one for potatoes and it's made with Gruyere cheese. Now that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to do that one as well. But what I wanted to do today is this potatoes au gratin. And I'm going to follow a basically as much as I can, as much as I want to, a classic French formula but there's a lot of variations some people add like crisped bacon bits to their potatoes au gratin i think america's test kitchen does that there's different herbs you can use i'm going to use rosemary and thyme but basically i'm going to try to stick to the basics as much as possible and then you follow whatever variations you might like so let's make potatoes au gratin I have here roughly two and a half pounds, about 1.1 kilograms of potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold, Daisy Ray, Romano, King Edward, whatever. I'm using russets because that's what they had in the store. A lot of the recipes that I looked at didn't even talk about the kind of potatoes. It just said potatoes. I may have more than I need here because I'm going to be using this baking dish for my potatoes au gratin. I just need basically need to fill this up without it mounding up too high. So the amount of potatoes you need really depends upon the dish that you have available. I'm going to use my electric rotary cutter today to slice my potatoes because I haven't used this in a video in a very long time. If you have a mandolin or mandoline however you pronounce it you can use that i've got one but it's out in the shed i'm going to use this today and if you're really good if you have good knife skills you can do it with a sharp knife all right i want to start off by cutting the ends off my potatoes here so that they're kind of flat on the ends and then Get this adjusted to get thin slices. Put my guard on there because that'll protect my fingers. And I'm going to start slicing potatoes. I'm getting down to the end here. And what I'm looking for is nice slices of potatoes, not too thin but not too thick either. I don't want them paper thin, but I want nice slices. Next, I've got a medium large yellow onion here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut the top off. I'm gonna peel it. I'll leave the root end on because that'll hold everything together. And then I'll put this on my slicer and get thin slices of this as well. This is gonna be a little bit tricky because the onion is round. It's gonna to want to roll, but this has points on it. Hopefully it'll hold it all together. And yes, that's a plane going overhead. This is a trailer park near the airport. There they are, nicely sliced. I'll put those in a bowl. And I'm ready to start assembling my dish. The next thing I need to do is heat up some stock and some milk. People ask me about these pans. These are Nouveau Princess House Exclusive made in France. 
uh, sorry, but they're no longer available. However, you can find them on the internet. I've seen them on eBay. These were given to me as a gift. So what I have here is one and a half cups, about 350 milliliters of stock. I'm using homemade chicken stock here. You can use chicken stock, beef stock, veal stock, lamb stock, combination of any and all of the above. Doesn't matter. And then I have here one half cup, about 120 milliliters of milk. I'm actually using half and half. That's one of the variations. Some people use all stock in their potatoes or gratin. Some use half milk, half stock. They might put heavy cream in there. That's what I'm doing. And I need to put this on the stove and just bring it to a simmer. I want to take a moment to talk about the herbs. I have here a small sprig of rosemary and a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme. These were taken from my little herb garden outside. I'm going to put these in the stock and milk mixture while it's heating so that they will infuse some of that that liquid with the flavor of the herbs. And then I might also put some of them in the dish too when I'm preparing it. I also need to melt some butter so I'm going to use my smaller of my pans here. Oh, and just to make you more jealous, one thing I like about these the handle pops off. You can put this in the oven. You can use it even as a serving dish. Snap the handle back on. I love these things. Okay, this is two ounces, four tablespoons, 57 grams of whole butter. I just need to melt those. I'm ready to start layering my potatoes and onions in my dish. And if you're wondering why I use these mats, besides not wanting this to slide around, I don't like that noise. See, that's quiet. All right. Now, you don't need to rinse or soak these potatoes, but I put them in a bowl of water and let it sit in the sink only because I go so long between setting up my shots. I gotta set up each shot, I wash dishes in between. Can sometimes be half an hour before I get back to something and I didn't want the potatoes to turn brown so that was the only reason why I put them in water I'm getting fancy here on the bottom but you don't need to you get fancy when you do the top all right so there's that I'm gonna put some onions in there I don't have as many onions so I'm just gonna kind of I don't want the dish to be too strong with onion. So I'll kind of parse that out a little bit, if that's the right word. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to work back and forth between the potatoes and the onions until I have this dish layered using up as much of my potatoes and onions as I can. I'm just finishing up now with my potatoes. I use most of my potatoes, not all of them. That's what I have left over. Just a few slices. I'll put one more in the middle there. Now, I'm going to put some freshly ground black pepper on there. And then a pinch of salt. And then, here's my milk and stock mixture. I'm going to start pouring that over the top, but I'm watching around the edges because I don't want to overfill this dish. Again, it depends upon how big the dish is that you're working with. And that's going to all go in there fine. I got plenty of room. I mentioned my herbs. I'm going to pull a few of these rosemary needles off, the leaves. And then my rosemary. Not, I'm sorry, this is the thyme. That's the rosemary that's already in there. Okay. And then. My 
my melted butter. Here's my melted butter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by dabbing some melted butter on top all the way around just to try to cover everything with melted butter. I read in one of the articles that one of the recipes that doing this helps to prevent them from browning and maybe even burning too soon. And then pour the remaining butter over the top. And that is ready to go into the oven. I've been heating my oven up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 175 degrees Celsius. And this is going to bake for one hour. I put the palm bouillonnaire in the oven. Before I heated that oven, I moved a rack to the upper third of the oven. You need to cook it toward the top of the oven. It'll brown better on top. Also, I set a timer for 30 minutes because about halfway through the cooking time, I'm going to start checking it periodically, regularly, to make sure that it's not going to over brown on the top and possibly burn. If I have to, I can cover it with foil to protect it. So here it is out of the oven. I'm not sure if I got enough browning on that. What I did do was this cooked for an hour and then I put the broiler on and browned that. Maybe it could have browned a little bit longer. I was afraid of some of these pieces burning. I don't know how much liquid I'm supposed to have in the bottom of this dish. What I did do was I took out some of the liquid, quite a bit actually, with a bulb baster and I put it in a pan on the stove and while this is resting it has to rest for 10 to 20 minutes I'm reducing that liquid and then I'll add it back to the dish because it has a really nice flavor to it all right I'm ready to dish some of this up let's see and then see what it tastes like Looks good. All right, let's see what I've got here. This is the first time I've made this. Hmm. Potatoes are cooked to perfection. They're not real soft and mushy. They hold up, as you can see, but they're not like raw or crisp or even al dente. Tastes like potatoes. I wouldn't call it a main dish, but it's definitely good for a side dish. I want one of these crispy brown ones. Mm. <laughs> it's good. All right. Excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my potatoes browned on top. Potatoes are gratin. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.